Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Failure is such a powerful teacher, but we fear it. We fear making mistakes. We fear not getting things right. It's human, of course, because who wants to be in pain or aching? But when we're willing to ask the questions, to look underneath it all, there are so many beautiful lessons and opportunities for growth. So often the most challenging times where we're confronted face to face by our shadows are the times our wounds are yearning for tending and healing. A time and opportunity to integrate the parts we've perhaps neglected. In today's episode, my guest Kate Jonas Hopeless shares on the beauty of failure, the lessons she's learned, and why it's okay to change your mind. Kate believes in owning every inch of our stories, the messy, successful, magical parts, the parts we hope would be different, and especially the parts that no longer fit because we have changed. Kate is a passionate, driven woman and mother who has worn many hats throughout the years including marketing director, childbirth doula, kickboxing instructor, TV series executive producer, and serial entrepreneur, her current company, Unstuck Co. She attributes her professional and personal growth to her failures and most painful experiences, not her victories. In today's episode, Kate shares why it's okay to change your mind, to continuously be learning and unlearning, what gets a lot of entrepreneurs stuck and stops them from taking the leap, the types of overwhelm and how to move through them, the narratives we hold on to and in what ways they hold us back, the difference between fixing and healing ourselves, and the beauty and lessons she's learned from failures and mistakes. Come get cozy and join our conversation. Hi, Kate. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me at the podcast today. How are you feeling? I feel good. I'm thrilled to be here with you. I love talking to you. You know that. I know. Me too. I value our conversation so much because we always start with talking about, you know, anything in life. And then it just, we dig through the layers. So I'm excited to dive in to get to know you a little bit more, share what you do with the audience, the people here. And you've worn many hats along the years. Some of them include marketing director, a childbirth doula, kickbox instructor, TV series executive producer, and published author. I am so fascinated by all your passions and skills. Can you tell me a little bit more about your journey and how you started embodying all these roles? Yeah, you know, I I think um, I've had that question a few times. And I think (laughs) that when I look back, because it feels, it feels like a lot and it feels kind of all over the map sometimes. But I think that the, the core of it all is just a curiosity about people and I love learning. And so when I was in university, I, I decided to train as a kickboxing instructor and, um, and I love babies. I was a baby junkie back then. I still am. And, and so came across, you know, a wonderful experience and a wonderful woman when I was having my kids and thought this is something I'd love to learn more about. And so, you know, I think I I talked to my kids about the iterations of their life and how they aren't held to one thing forever and ever on men. Like you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to experiment. You're allowed to rediscover. You're allowed to learn and then unlearn and then learn something else. And so I feel like... I was, I was really lucky to have a mom who, who encouraged that, who just said, yeah, go for it. Yeah. What do you want to try? 
Oh, I think I want to try this. Yeah, you'll be great at it. And I bring something else up two years later. Yeah, you'll be great at it. Now, I've always had a lot of safety, felt a lot of safety and stability in, in uh, you know, a consistent paycheck or a job or something that I can really make sure I'm feeding my, my kids with. But, but outside of that, I think that there's a lot of room to experiment and try different things, especially in the last 20 years. Um, and so I think trying things, learning new things, meeting new people. My, my love and passion is to be part of really great things with really great people. And so those things can embody, take on different forms and they can embody different products or different companies or different um, directions. As long as I'm part of something really, really cool with really, really cool people that I love doing, I'm, I'm kind of in. Yeah. Mm, I love it. And it's, there's a beauty in following your curiosity without being attached to the results because so mm. often I see people being interested in things, but they're like, oh, if I take a childbirth doula course, that means I'm going to be a doula forever, or that's going to be my main source of income. And I feel like that can close us off because we don't, like you said, it's not one thing or the other, and you don't have to push it into a career unless you feel interested in I think you can do things that you love, um, whether or not you make money at them. And I, I knew, you know, back then I loved that. I, I would still, I, I love being part of the birth process. I, I did it with a few people a few times back then, many people, many clients actually. Um, but I, I don't really remember wanting to make it a career. I, I just loved it. It is, it is one of the coolest things on the planet to be part of. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think that especially in today's day and age where you can you you can learn and be taught and and seek out mentorship in almost any area uh the world's your oyster like I, I tell my kids that all the time do it do what you want try it go for it well what if I don't like it then you don't like it then you don't do it but it's okay yeah. it's all good. it sounds so simple right we get so attached in our own desires so thank you for sharing that you're also a serial entrepreneur what were some of the business you started and the one that you currently have, Unstuck Co? Tell me more about it. I think I've also, um, one of the things that's been a thread through my life is this entrepreneurial kind of spirit, you know, and marketing and branding. And let's see if we can make a go of it. And you see a market need and you want to address it. And I don't know, I just, I find that fun. I find that process fun for the most part. It's, it can be an agonizing process. It's, it, it's not for the faint of heart. And not all of my businesses have been successful. I've made some pretty epic mistakes. Um, and, and learn more from those than mistakes than really anything else. But I remember in my 20s with a friend of mine starting a, a child care, like a baby clothing company that we would just go to the markets on the weekend and sell. And uh, it was fun. It was just fun. And then, you know, the kickboxing, teaching classes, being a childbirth doula, then maybe seven, eight years ago, I had a medical or aesthetics clinic in, in downtown Toronto in, in Yorkville. Um, that was a business that I, that I closed. It, it started to cost me far too much relationally and just wasn't able to make it work. It was a, a good couple of hours from my home. And, and, and it was one of those entrepreneurial ventures that that I tried, um, had some red flags along the way, ignored them, ended up uh, folding the business and, and carrying, carrying the shame of, of those mistakes for quite some time until probably fairly recently. Um, but I would, if I had to look back on the arc of my life, that would be one of the things in my life among other you know, mistakes I've made that taught me more than the successes have taught me. Um, so, always had the entrepreneurial spirit, but not everything works out always, all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What have you noticed when entrepreneurs come to you? What is the biggest thing that is stopping them from even starting a business or going through with it? Uh, that That's, it's a really good question. I think that fear of it not working, I think fear around putting ourselves out there and allowing people to really see us, um, which means sometimes our mistakes. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that we, and I did this myself, it's, it's not like I'm, it's not like I've mastered the art of becoming 
and you know being an entrepreneur and I've got it all figured out not at all I think that it's ebb and flow I think sometimes you walk around the same block over and over again and learn the same lessons I think it's tough and what what I find holds most people back or in the language of of the business keeps people stuck and what I help them get unstuck with is is you know belief in self and you know practical tactical this is how we get this done it's funny though because sometimes when I'm talking with a client about the practical things that need to be done, the, the real world tactical A, B, C, D, branding, marketing, communications, or, or the, the systems that have to be built to build a business, the, the stuck part often comes on a personal level and it, it manifests itself in other ways in in questions around the tactical, or I'm not sure about this, or I'll give somebody a, they'll say, okay, teach me how to do this. I teach them, I'll give them the list, and then it just doesn't get done. And, and I always wonder and kind of go back to the client and say, okay, well, what is the hesitancy? You know, what is the, what is, what is holding you back? What is the piece? And a lot of the time we don't know what it is. I mean, I've been in the same boat myself. I, it's this, this narrow, figuring out this narrow sweet spot between, I want all of these things. I believe I can build this and do it. And I'm scared to death to do it. And so we get yeah. stuck in this middle spot of, um, I don't know why it's not working for me or, and really it's almost always deep seated and personal. And it's really, really painful stuff for a lot of people. It's what I've witnessed anyway, with my clients, it can mm -hmm. be excruciating to uncover the stuff about ourselves that we, we struggle with like fear or we don't believe we can pull it off. Or if we do pull it off, maybe that means we're selfish or we're not a great mom or a great spouse or a great friend or, or being ambitious isn't becoming. And, and really, I would just encourage people to, to do what's right for them because it looks different for everybody and to mm -hmm. really mine mind those narratives that are holding us back or the, the, the beliefs that no longer serve us. They might have served you at one point, but they probably no longer serve you. And that's okay because you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to grow. Uh, lots of things I've done in the last 10 or 15 years, I look back now and cringe. Um, that's how it's supposed to be. Like you have, if you look back at your past and nothing you do is cringeworthy, then are you really growing? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 you know, let's own every inch of our stories. Like, did you do the best you could back then with what you knew? Yeah, probably. Uh, was it, is it cringeworthy looking back? Maybe. Awesome. It means you're growing. Like, and it's taken me a long time to not beat myself up over the things that have felt cringeworthy to me from, from my past, you know? Mm. I love that where this conversation is growing because I definitely had a lot of resistance that I was unaware of. And it was painful because I just knew I was stuck and it was almost as if I could see the other side. I could almost feel it, but why couldn't I get there? So when you uncover limiting beliefs and the stories that your clients might be holding, how do they feel? Are they willing to uncover? Or a lot of them are just like, you know, I'll do the tactical stuff because they have to be ready to look under the rug as well. Yo, you're right. You're you're hundred percent right. I've been in in that position myself. You're right. Um, it is a tough process. I think it requires real courage, like relational, mental, emotional courage. Uh, to, to look at things because you, you never know what, what you're going to find when you take the lid off and go, okay, well, okay. It feels like this belief is holding me back. Okay. Why, why does it feel like it is? Okay. I've answered that question. You sit with it. Maybe you meditate on it. You, you write about it, but where did I come up with this belief? Why, why do I believe this about myself? Why do I believe I have to be perfect? Why do I believe that uh, for me personally, uh, why do I struggle so much to forgive myself for my past mistakes? Why, and, and really look under that because the answers I think are often bigger than the questions themselves. And they open up a whole nother area of your life or, and, and, and at the end of the day, you have to want to get better 
or love well or live abundantly or successfully or thrive in your own life more than you want to stay stuck. If you, mm -hmm. if the narratives you play and the stories you tell themselves, I walk through this stuff with my girlfriends all the time. If your need to be able to tell that story, so often it's because your identities become woven in that story, I have found anyway, and with my clients, if your need to hold on to that piece of yourself is greater than the pain of being stuck or feeling like crap or, you know, beating yourself up or not forgiving yourself, then you'll stay there. But my mom all my life has said to me a bunch of things, but one of the things she says all the time, no matter what I'm going through, if I'm in pain, when you're tired of hurting, you'll stop. Catherine, which is my full name, when you're tired of hurting, you'll stop. And I, I tell my kids that. And, and it's okay if you're not tired of hurting yet. It's okay if the fear isn't paralyzing. But usually for the people I work with, there does come a, a point where they're tired of feeling like this. They, like you said, can see their vision. It's there. They know what needs to be done. But they also have an inkling that there's probably something to look at and that it's probably going to be messy and and they're ready and willing to do it. I don't know that you can force anybody to do anything they're not ready for. And so, you know, sometimes I give tactical plans and real really, you know, practical advice um, and people will implement it. But whether or not they thrive in that vision or their business is a whole other topic, right? That's, that's really up to them. I just think it's really, really difficult to untangle our mind, heart, soul with what we do every day. Okay. Um, I think that it's okay that personal and professional overlap and that fear and emotion in business is a real thing. And it's something we're, we should be talking about, you know? Yes more conversations like these because you only see people who are already thriving who have a platform they share and it's great I love that they talk about how hard it was for them to get there but what about the people who are in between the people who are exactly stuck and I love those words that your mom shared with you when you're ready to be hurting then you'll start healing because it's also empowering Sometimes it's daunting to feel like you chose to be stuck, but you can also choose to get out of there when you're ready. And it's right. little things. You don't have to fix it all or if there's anything to fix, right? It's just being open to that. And I love, I love that. I love like when you're ready, then take the next step, whatever that yeah. is. I, I think too, you know, I, I don't know that it's even we talk a lot about fixing those things. And, and I do feel like there's a difference between fixing something and healing something. Uh, and they're not the same thing. And I have lived a lot of my life feeling like a lot needs to be fixed or I should be more this or that. And, and really, I think that most of us are doing the best we can with what we have. And the, you know, it's Maya Angelou, when you know better, you do better. And in order to know better, that often involves self-compassion and healing and, and, and really forgiving ourselves for the mistakes we've made. Um, in the entrepreneurial journey, I have found that, you know, you describe the in-between. I think I'm there a lot of the time. And that's okay. Like it's, it feels like a moving target for me. Every day isn't the same. I don't feel the same way every day. My three children don't need the same things every day. I want to be a good mother and a good friend and a good daughter. I want to love well. I want to do, I want to thrive. I think like everybody else. And some days I just don't feel like doing any of it. Right. And so, um, I think that what you're, you know, what I love about what you're all about is the clarity piece is getting really clear on, on who you are and what you want, which sometimes means getting clear on who you are not first and what you don't want. Right. Yeah. And that's, I, I, you know, I'm in my late forties and only in the last, only in my forties have I become much clearer on not just who I am, but first who I wasn't, you know, like mm -hmm. I remember someone saying to me, um, what's the cost of admission with you? And, and I, you know, I, I said, uh, what, <laughs> what, what are we saying? You know, and he said, like, the, the cost of admission, the cost of what is what, it, what are the non negotiables of being in a relationship with you? 
And for me, wow. business and personal are very similar. And I think that it's around all of what we're talking about, which is relational courage, which is the courage to look at things, the courage to talk about the difficult things or to, to admit, you know, this is really hard and I just don't know how to do it. I need help. And I have not always been good at that. Like I've actually sucked at it a lot in my life and, or, or to go to my children and say, how do I love you better right now? And, and, and hear the answer. Like my daughter, my two daughters and my son will, will readily say, um, you know, when you do this, I feel like this, or, you know, you've changed, you know, you've adjusted some of the things I've asked you to, because they all receive love differently, just like all of our business colleagues receive respect differently. So, you know, I'm, when I'm in new situations with clients, I, I will often say, you know, how do you best receive information? How do I, you know, talk to you? How do I service you? It's, it's this bigger piece around, we're all just trying to do our best. And so let's just talk about what that looks like, what it looks like for you, what it looks like for me. And I think a lot of people struggle having those conversations. And, and, and it's unfortunate because they're really, really important. You know, yeah. not, not that I didn't struggle. I have in my life very much. Um, but, but the more of those conversations I have, the healthier the relationships are, whether personally or professionally. Yeah. Does that oh, make sense? That's totally. And it's so like you said, you ask the questions, but are you willing to hear the answers? There's so much courage. I know people, some people ask it, but when you said something that doesn't resonate with them or maybe mm -hmm. it even hurts them, mm -hmm. that's when I've, I've known people like close to me that wanted certain things, but they weren't ready. So it, it's so important to open space for these conversations and be more resilient, as heartbreaking as it can be. Yeah, that, that's a good word. It is about resilience. So when you look, when you um, talk to those people and they didn't want to hear the answer and they weren't ready, how did you deal with that? Because that's a tough one, isn't it? It's, oh, it's I think big... that's why I started bottling everything up. Growing up, I, mm. you know, very sensitive. I just had mm. a talk with a Brooke a couple of weeks ago about HSP, highly sensitive people. And mm -hmm. I can relate to that because I felt so many things. And maybe sometimes I could see where the disconnect happened. And I would point it out to whoever asked me and they weren't ready, even though they asked me what was wrong. Mm. And a lot of times it was family, people that were my elders. So it seemed like I was talking back to them or that I was too young to know better. So mm -hmm. I just bottled it up and it became part of my story of, oh, maybe I don't have anything that was good to say, or maybe I might as well be a wall. Everybody wants to talk to me, but they don't want to hear what I really want to say. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough spot to be in. I think that I think that there are those conversations that you have. I know that I, I remember years ago, a friend saying to me, you know, Kate, I I think what would really help you is to assume that everybody's heart is good first, rather than to assume that their intentions are, are negative. It changed my perspective because I was able to have more of those conversations and not necessarily with other people. I mean, people having them with me, telling me the truth about something that was kind of ugly because that does not feel good to hear. I mean, we, we still, we have visceral reactions to somebody saying some version of, you know what, you suck or you could do better. And I think it's the middle ground of, I love you unconditionally. There isn't anything that you can do, We're, you know, specifically in our close relationships and the safety of those, safety is a big deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love you unconditionally and there's nothing you can do to make me stop loving you. And, and I love you enough to tell you the truth and hold you accountable because I think you're capable of more. And that, those conversations have only happened in my life in the last 10 years. Um, I find more of those coming up with my clients and which is funny because it is a client really, it is a, a professional relationship, right? But I find them coming up more. And I remember recently asking a new client, you know, why did you seek me out? And she said something that was interesting. She said, I know you'll tell me the truth. And, and I, and I, and I said, in what regard? And she said, in every regard, not just on what I need to do, but also where you see me being stuck, including holding myself back. And I've just had to learn, I'm learning, I'm still learning, of course, to do it in a way that 
people can receive that information and not be so harsh and so, and I can still be very, very blunt. Uh, I, I will admit, I think that there's on, on occasion a place for that. But I also think there's a way to deliver information that doesn't obliterate people, you know, that doesn't mm -hmm. cause them to collapse internally. And, yeah. and, and that's a, that's a skill that I, that I'm still working on for sure. I, I'm not, I haven't mastered it yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I learned to do too. And ask them like, do you really want to hear what I think? Or you just want mm -hmm. me, you just want to rent? Because a lot of times people want to rent and being able to differentiate. Do you want me to hold space and you can rent about it? Or do you want advice? I think even just asking that helped me preserve my energy and know if, you know, if I was being invited to give that advice. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter taught me that actually last summer. She said something along those lines. Can you ask me before if I want your advice? or if I just need to rant. And, and, and I, so I started asking her that or, or questions like, you know, they're going through a tough time and how, how can I love you better today? Like, how can I support you today? Like a very direct, sometimes it's leave me alone. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's uh, what would you do if you were me? Sometimes it's, can we just go for a walk and not talk? Or can we not, can you leave me alone in my room? Like it's, it, it's an interesting thing to, to, to get, to do well at or to get good at and i yeah my first inclination is to want to fix it right oh yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. like it, we, especially i can imagine if, it, you're, if it's your children you don't want to see them suffering but you can't walk the walk for them no and i just keep remembering that of all the things in my life the greatest teachers and the most growth I have felt is in my suffering, in the, the mistakes I've made and, you know, in my divorce and in, in losing, uh, you know, money on epic amounts of money on, on a bad business decision and in, in choosing to ignore my integrity for human connection. It, it, in being in a relationship, you know, I walked away from a friendship about a year and a half ago that's been so liberating, but was very difficult for me to do, mm -hmm. to justify or to, to, to trust myself. I, I knew it was the right thing to do, but to trust myself to do that and with no hard feelings and all of those things caused for me quite a bit of suffering and, or pain anyway. I think there's a difference mm -hmm. between pain and suffering whole different conversation. But the pain around that is what's taught me so much. So when my kids are going through something that's painful, I try to remember um, the pain has taught you a lot, Kate, allow it to teach them, right? Like, it's okay. It, it's still not easy to watch them go through it, as I'm sure it wasn't for my parents. But it is healthy, I think. Mm, yes mm. thank you for bringing that up because as someone who was always super positive like almost as to the point of toxic positivity for myself where I would get my heart broken but I'm like it's fine mm. at least I had you know a couple good months where I got to meet this guy and then afterwards I'm like and I was consciously pushing that pain down but like you said once you start embracing it and understand that pain is not a bad emotion I think we're not taught to how to deal with it or how to cope with it because we want to just push it away and that's why you know maybe it's a generalization but with addictions and you see pain that's what they're trying to run away from yeah it, it doesn't feel good it hurts like who who wants I mean, who do you know that's like, yeah, bring on the hurt. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's counterintuitive. And I, I honestly cannot remember one single period of my life or one painful experience that didn't teach me so much. Like I wouldn't take, my divorce was, was arguably one of the most painful, beautiful gifts in my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, it just was. So was the money I lost on the business. I've made some huge mistakes. Um, I think that I think the issue, to your point, you know, you've had a bad couple of months. It's neither extreme. It's not coming out of it and saying, "Oh, I'm fine. It was fine." No, it's actually it wasn't fine, but also not sitting in it for so long that it becomes your identity, or mm -hmm. that that's how you that you can't get out of it. Right? That becomes a slippery slope, and I think it requires knowing ourselves well enough to go, okay, it, it's hurt. It, it has hurt. I, I know I went through a period recently where something hurt a lot, a lot. 
I remember saying to my mom, who's one of my best friends and a couple of my best friends, I can't live here much longer. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm angry. I'm resentful. I've, you know, I'm feeling all those things. I'm squishing around in my pain. It feels horrible. If I stay here much longer, it's going to become who I am. Like I, please hold me accountable for that. And, and I remember my, my girlfriend two months later saying, you're still really angry. And I was like, no, no, I've worked through it. She's yeah. like, no, 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 no it oozes off of you. And I'm like, what? Like wow. my growth? She goes, no, your anger. You're wow. I'm like, oh God. And, and then she said, did I hurt you? I'm like, yes, that's, that hurts me to hear, but no, thank you for loving me enough to tell me the truth. Mm. Cause she was exactly right. She was right. And she loved me enough to say, mm, you still have some things to work through. That's like, that's the gift because I know she wants what's best for me. I know she loves yeah. me. And, yeah. and so that, that, that cycle, the, the yes, let it hurt. Yes, feel it. Don't push it down too far. Mm -hmm. Then when it's overtaking your life or it becomes your narrative or it no longer serves you back to how we started the conversation, it no longer serves you, um, figure out how to let it go. Right. Yeah. And that for me is lots of things. I think, you know, I talk to my clients when you're stuck, you know, what is it that you do? It's, it's a walk in nature. It's meditation. It's journaling. It's really looking at why we're stuck, but whatever it is for you, you're worthy of that. Like you're worthy of that kind of, you deserve to thrive. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to wake up excited for your day. Not every day is going to be beautiful. Some days are going to suck. You also yeah. deserve to sit in, in a funk and watch Netflix all day. Just watch what's optimal for you. What, you know, look at what makes you thrive. You know, for me, it's talks like this with girlfriends yeah. where I go, yeah, let's, let's really talk about this. Like I, I'm tired of pretending it's, you know, sunshine and unicorns all the time. It can be really hard. Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzle to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in our lives. So you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. Can you imagine if more people were so honest and willing to talk about these things, there would be less suffering in silence, in isolation, because a lot of times we hide these parts of us because we don't know how to deal with it. Like, how do we share it with someone who doesn't know how to hold space for that? So creating environments like this is so powerful. And it also makes me think it's like a process. Like you say, you have to go through it, go through the pain. And then the other side, if you're willing to look through it, there's the growth. And there's no time frame for this. I think that's the most terrifying part because when you're doing, if we bring this into a business lens, you don't know when your imposter syndrome will be like guaranteed two weeks imposter syndrome gone. Like you don't know when it's going to be gone, but it's part of the process and being able to infuse that with the little things we do in business in life. I think that's the beauty of the journey. You're always growing, not because you're not perfect or that you need to be fixed, but that's what the journey is. Yeah, no, I fully agree. And I think even, as you get healthier, let's say imposter syndromes are great because I've suffered there too. It's a fantastic um, uh, example because you'll not feel it for three or four months and then something will happen and you'll wake up one day and it, it comes back. Yeah. It, it, that's even happened in, you know, I, my, my kids and I are happy. My ex-husband's remarried. Everybody's well-adjusted and healthy. And I still have moments where I go, what was that? Like, how did I get here? you know, like, or where it hurts again, where I mourn the loss of the family unit or mm -hmm. not, not, I'm not, not reliving it. I'm not wanting to go back there, but where you go, wow. Or, or you lose somebody, a death. I did not that it's just about marriages and family, not at all. Or, or you, you know, you lose some money or you make a big mistake or you're, you haven't found your soulmate yet or wh whatever hurts you. It, it's allowed to hurt. And it's allowed to rear its ugly head two and three years later. It's also allowed to be healed and let it rest. That that's also okay. And I've, it's taken me a long time to come to a place where I fully accept where I'm at right now, where, yeah. where what feels healthy to me is different than what feels healthy to somebody else right now. This is what feels healthy for me. And that's okay. And I think 
when I talk to my friends about this, I'm constantly talking about the growth. Focus on, like you said, the, the, the small wins or the, the progress you're making. It doesn't have to be a multi-million dollar business. It can be a really healthy conversation with a friend that you were afraid to have. It can be a task that you've been putting off for three weeks. That's a win for you. Like embrace it, own it, celebrate it, do a little dance. You know, it's good. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amen to all of that. (laughs) And you shared a little bit about failure and how you've learned. When you realize in your businesses that you hit a wall or in quotations fail, because I don't think really fail, it just didn't work out. Was it as daunting or as terrifying as you thought it would be? Like, did you get stuck like you thought you'd be? Like, how did you make it to the other side? Yeah, great question. So at, at the time, I think it felt pretty awful. Um, so the answer to the question was, it is terrifying and daunting. At the time, it felt that way. But another thing that my mom used to always say is this too shall pass. And so I would relay that in my head, this too shall pass. So I, I in most, a lot of people instinctively know, I think that there's no way through something, but through it. I think mm-hmm. that even though we know that we try to jump over it, around it, under it, oh, yeah. whatever, <laughs> to the left, to the right. I mean, it's, nobody wants to hurt. It, it, I think it's natural, but I do think it's important to just go through it. So in those, I agree with the word failure in the way you see it. I don't think it's a great word because in my quote unquote failures, I've learned more than at any other time in my life. So that would, I would almost like to see the word success or Mm -hmm. opportunities for growth or whatever it is, but let's call it a failure because by societal standards, you know, these things did fail for sure. Um, calling it a failure and yet learning a lot from it was a complete gift. In those moments though, I remember thinking, well, you, you, what are your options, Kate? Like you, you have these kids, you've got this life, you've got this house, you have these goals, you have these friends, whatever we have in our lives. Um, you need you, they need you. What are your options? Just, mm-hmm. you've got to get through it. So what's it going to take? And it's a lot of conversations and maybe some good meltdowns and some journaling and maybe feeling sorry for myself for a while. And, you know, maybe, you know, working out or not working out or or meditating or whatever it is you do. Um, Complaining about it for a little while. Okay. Having a friend kick in the ass and go, okay, no more complaining. Um, Whatever it is, but you have to move forward at some point. You you, you have to get through it. Like, you know, I've heard in many meditations, all of the things that you didn't think you'd get through, you did because you're here listening to this, right? You know, and so to resign yourself to the truth that you'll be okay, um, even if you don't know how you'll be okay, I've lots of times thought I have no idea how I'm going to get through this, or, or I can't imagine a time where this won't hurt. Mm-hmm. trusting and believing that that time will come, even if I don't know what it looks like. And, and yeah. so for me, the underpinning of all of it is trust. Just trust somehow, some way, a uh, random conversation with a stranger that gives you hope, a uh, random phone call, uh, uh, I don't know, money you didn't expect, um, yeah. waking up one morning and feeling all right, or, or not hurting as much. Those are the little things I clung to when when I was in a really dark time or a a, a season of failure, you know, Mm -hmm. in quotations, in quotations. Uh, That's right. I agree, (laughs) Jess. I agree. There's also this really, really fun quiz I saw on your website to help people identify their kind of overwhelm. And I think that's so powerful because so many times we get stuck on I'm overwhelmed, ah, meltdown, but then identifying which kind of overwhelm gives you so much clarity. Tell me more about it. Yeah, I think I've discovered that just through lots of different client interactions. So I have some clients who say their overwhelm is about the sheer volume of stuff they have to do. So Mm -hmm. maybe we make lists, right? And then we take those lists and we cut them up and go, okay, here here are the things that I don't want to outsource. These are the things that are critical to my vision and my business. This creative piece, I need to do that. But these three things I can outsource, okay? I'm broke, can't afford to pay for that. All right. Who do you know in your life that you can make a meal for who's good at that? 
you know, like kind of breaking things down and simplifying going in a world where you're not afraid to ask for help because of what people might think of you. Okay. Let's just pretend it's that game. Uh, who are you going to, who's good at this? Is it bookkeeping? Okay. How do I walk through this with a friend the other day, a mutual friend of ours actually. And, um, She's like, no, no, that makes me feel really good. Okay, uh, I can do that. I can do that. Here's what I don't want to outsource. Okay. And you sort of um, take it from a big, huge pie into little bite-sized chunks, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's a type of overwhelm in, in your mind. And so maybe it's just a conversation where you vent. I, I went through this recently as well with a friend who just said, okay, I'm anxious about all these things. And she started to vent and then say weave them all together and I go, okay, hang on. What does this have to do with this? Well, no, but what does it actually, oh, I guess it doesn't. And so kind of, again, bite-sized chunks. What yeah. can I control? What's out of my control? What if we follow through in our mind, you know, if, do we really think is gonna happen with this? Like these kinds of playing out the scenario. Okay, what can mm -hmm. I do right now? And maybe it's a bubble bath or maybe it is ticking something off the list. I know when I'm overwhelmed with the sheer volume of work or I, I do two things, very grateful for the work because at the beginning of COVID, a lot of my contracts stopped and my panic was a different kind of panic, mm -hmm. right? I've got yeah. kids to feed kind of panic. And then I sometimes counterintuitively put down everything and go for a long walk and put on one of my favorite meditations because I'm not making any headway staying in my head in the frenzy of my mind yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. I totally have had moments where I was like my mind was in a frenzy and I realized all the things I was doing I was so excited when I planned it but then I became overwhelmed so I just went for a walk and like almost 10 out of 10 I felt like a different person coming back I'm like oh why was I so overwhelmed those deadlines were set by me it's not the end of the world but it's so important to take a step back whenever you catch yourself spiraling because it's easy to just go lower and lower and lower. Very easy. I think, I think you make a, a good point to catch yourself is the big, big thing. So that's like a ha habit cultivation, right? Uh, cultivating these habits of when I feel that way, I need to just stop and really take a step back. Whatever that means for you. I think that that's really important catching yourself because that downward spiral can get for me anyway pretty ugly same here <laughs> same here and then after a couple of hours what did I do all day <laughs> yeah yep I've been there <laughs> so Kate I've told you so many times I love the way you talk and you write the mm -hmm. way you put the words together something something about that energy I'm just always pulled to you I'm like please talk more and I wanted to talk about one of your latest projects, which is uh, Pursuit 365, a book where you co-author alongside 364 women. Mm. Tell us more about it. And if you would be willing to read a little passage, I think even our listeners would love it. Uh, well, that was, uh, it's, it was a really fun project to do. It is a compilation of 365 stories, one of which is mine of uh, business women, entrepreneurs, all female across Canada, um, not necessarily entrepreneurs, but female and uh, strong and resilient and funny and alive and honest and authentic and just fascinating people who have something to say. And so it is the you know, passion project of a woman in, in BC named Shelley Lynn Hughes, who put together this book to profile these women in a way to celebrate uh, how we celebrate our lives and make something our lives. It really is the pursuit of what makes us happy, right, individually. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's story is radically different. Sometimes it comes out of pain. Sometimes it comes out of um, working really hard to achieve something or a, a diagnosis. The stories are fascinating. And so every day is the launch of a new face, new woman, new story, new powerhouse mm -hmm. where they tell their story and it's profiled in the magazine uh, that she has on a website. And then in this book, the book was launched on March 8th, which is International Women's Day. And 
It sold out. We did two it runs. It sold out. I didn't get to order it. It yeah, sold yeah. out because I asked you and I'm like, okay, maybe another edition will come. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think we're doing another run, but it sold out twice. It was a bestseller on Amazon that, um, that day. We were thrilled, thrilled about that. I actually have, you know, family members who, who haven't been able to get a copy. I actually still don't have my copy either because uh, we, we, we all got them uh, from, from our publisher. Mm -hmm. so I my day is coming up on June 16th we got to choose the day that we wanted to be launched and for most of us that that worked out it is the day that my mother uh, got sober 38 years ago so it was a mm -hmm. I think the most pivotal pivotal day in my life uh, so on June 16th I'll be featured as the feature author there's a double feature yeah <laughs> as a featured author and my story is again 365 words or fewer one a day for 365 days. It was a very, very cool project and an honor to be asked to be part of it for sure. Yeah. Oh, can you share a passage with us? I can, I can, I can. So I will read the, the, the piece that I wrote. Uh, there is a little bio at the top uh, that, that was written on behalf of me. And then I'll, I'll read to you what I wrote. So um, my last name is very long, but it's actually quite easy to say. It's just John is hopeless. So <laughs> it starts with Kate Johnisopoulos is a passionate, driven, layered woman who has worn many hats through the years, including marketing director, childbirth doula, kickboxing instructor, TV series executive producer, and serial entrepreneur, current Unstuck Co. She attributes her personal and professional growth to her failures and most painful experiences, not her victories. I believe in owning every inch of our stories, the messy parts, the successful parts, the magical parts, the parts we hoped would be different, and especially the parts that no longer fit because we have changed. I believe our lives are meant to be wholly, fully lived, showing up, especially when it's painful or tough, using our voices, refusing to sterilize, diminish, or polish who we are or what we need so others are more comfortable with their choices. I believe our lives are about learning and unlearning, growing, expanding, falling, getting it wrong, and then trying again, humbly asking for forgiveness from others and forgiving ourselves, then recovering, rebuilding, and reclaiming. When things get messy or ugly, have the courage to look inside at what needs healing, and healing is not fixing. For me, the most painful parts of my life have also been the most beautiful. I have learned to feel deeply, love hard, and laugh at myself, even when it feels cringy. I've also learned to show up for myself and others, to fall, fail, hurt, grieve, and then get back up, to share my mistakes and experiences unvarnished and truthfully, to choose closure, honesty, and courage, to recognize I will fall short of others' expectations, and to still choose to not fall short of my own, to fiercely trust with everything I am, because what is meant for me will find me. We all get stuck sometimes. We're supposed to. Isn't life about living and loving and feeling and growing in healthy ways? Our stories belong to us. Our stories brought us here now with this soul to do this. Hence, Unstuck Co., my soul project, my business. My pursuit is about becoming whole for self and others. It is about unwavering trust in abundance, in the generosity of the universe, in the inherent goodness of myself and of others, and in the whole beautiful layered process. Thank you, Kate. That gave me chills. Even though I've read it before, I just love how you share your experience in such a raw, open way and show up, even though it's messy and scary. I, I know a book of yours is going to be coming soon, <laughs> and I'll be the first to buy it, whatever you write. Thank you. Thank you. It was a joy to write it. And it is gets messy. You're right. And it, it's still cringy for me. I still struggle with being with putting myself out there. And, but but I'm doing it. And I encourage everyone to if you've got something to say, say it, share it, yeah. write it. It's, it's inspiring. And it inspires others to take these steps to own our authenticness, our messiness, everything that makes us us. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thanks I for agree. the permission slip. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Mm. I also wanted a few more questions um, to ask you about motherhood. You are a mother to three amazing humans. And I love how every time you talk about your kids, you have so much admiration and love. Mm. 
how has becoming a mother what were the lessons that you've learned since you became a mother oh yeah it's 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 not an easy job and but it is the greatest honor on the planet and i I love who my children have become. So they're all adults now, pretty much. And it has not always been easy. I have messed it up a hundred different ways, um, but I have also done the best I can and, and have tried to love them better and grow in, in, in who I am so that I'm a better parent to them. It is one of my most important roles, uh, if not the most important role. I love being their mother, love, love, love being their mother. I love who they have become. And, and even on the days where it's tough, really tough and really hard and where I really screw it up, they hold tons of grace for me in the, way, in the ways that I want to hold for other people. They are very quick to forgive and honest about what they need and how they feel um, and I think that's the best we can all do, right? Yeah. Honestly, just show up, be you. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. What is inspiring you currently? I know you have a couple of projects that you're working on. I just love working. So I feel very inspired when somebody, when I'm doing something challenging and, and pushing myself. And so I do that in my business and in the contracts I have, and even on a personal level in my friendships. I, um, I don't know if it's my Enneagram eightness, but I definitely am someone who loves to be challenged and, and who loves to work. There was a time in my motherhood where I felt I needed to apologize for loving working, but I love working. I, me being bored is not good for anybody. And so I need to use my brain. And so I often have many projects on the go. Um, I love to be active. I just, I'm inspired by the people around me, um, you being one of them. I, you know, in, in, in a recent group that, that, that I was in, that, that we were part of, I'm inspired by people who go for it and who push and who seek more and who are honest about the journey and who um, build and lift each other up. I don't know that that's all that common, but I found it there. And I was very inspired by that, like moved, not just inspired. I, I find that to be sometimes an overused word, moved. I was, I was ruined by it actually, ruined in the best way, really, yeah. You're so right about finding a group of people. I think that's what helped me get unstuck. Mm. That was the last missing piece of the puzzle because tactical, I knew what I needed to do business-wise, but then having this group of people that were holding you as you were and also giving you the courage as they went into the messiness themselves, that was amazing. Yeah, we're lucky. We're really lucky. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love, I love, love how you talked about owning and loving working because I love working and it doesn't feel like work because it's not something I don't enjoy. Sometimes in the weekend, I'm just, you know, getting lost in the flow because it's fun. Mm, agreed. I, I've been given a, a recently a huge, it's probably the biggest writing project I've ever been given. And I live and breathe it and I love it so much. I can't even tell you. I, and, and I have to take breaks from it and I need other things in my life, but that Oh, I just think it's the greatest gift to be to to be part of something or to be building something that that you're passionate about or that gives you life is such a privilege. It is such a privilege. And I have yeah. realized that, you know, in COVID, right, when some of my contracts stopped and I yeah. was like, I miss working. <laughs> I want to work, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're worthy of working on things that make us thrive. Mm -hmm. I agree That's so beautiful imagine like if everyone in the world were doing things that they enjoyed yeah we have the luxury of that we're very yeah, fortunate definitely yeah. it's a luxury yeah. yeah oh thank you so much for this amazing conversation Kate I could keep you here for a couple of hours but <laughs> maybe we'll do a follow-up I wanted to wrap this up with some rapid fire questions Are you uh, okay, okay. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. what's see. the best compliment you've ever received Ah, okay. Um, that 
my son-in-law said this um, fairly recently. He said that when my daughter is in touch with me, she's a better human being. She's a more calm, peaceful human being. And I get it because I am too with my mother. The more I'm in touch with certain people in my life. So when someone says you make me a better human, I just don't think it gets better than that. And there are a bunch of people in my life that make me better. And I'm really, really fortunate like that. Yeah. Does it get better? You know, mm-hmm. they call you to more. It's awesome. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. A book that changed your life. Oh, anything by Brene Brown. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been through a bunch of them a bunch of times um, because I have definitely struggled with vulnerability and, and looking inside no matter how messy it gets. So really anything, anything by Brene Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Agree. What does coming home to yourself mean? Mm -hmm. I think radical self-acceptance, even the ugly stuff, especially the ugly stuff. I've really struggled to not beat myself up over um, some of my mistakes or, or the parts of myself that aren't overly attractive to me or that I've decided aren't, that they should be different and, and sort of coming to a place where self-acceptance settles into your bones and you just think yeah you're not perfect and there's still some stuff to work on but it's okay it's okay Mm -hmm. radical self-acceptance I love that what Mm -hmm. would you like more of I love seeing people around me thrive and the more that happens the more I want more of it and Mm -hmm. It's been a really tough season for a lot of people, a tough year and a half. And I've walked alongside, you know, as we all have lots of people in our lives who are really struggling. And so as people start to come out of this a little bit and take what COVID has taught them or the gifts of COVID and then leave the things that have felt yucky, but settle into this middle ground where they're thriving. That's what I want more of. That's what I want to see more of for people. Mm-hmm. to that advice mm-hmm. for younger self it'll work out it'll be fine it, it, it might hurt right now but you'll learn because pretty much everything in your life your experiences your conversations your mistakes your victories pretty much all of it on some level, I believe is called to you to teach you how to become whole. And so it's okay. It's all right. It'll work out Mm -hmm. somehow. Just might not, sorry. (laughs) It just might not look like we want it to look like. That's the tough part. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Where can people find you? Mm. Uh, So the website for sure. And then socials. So on Instagram, on everything actually it's unstuck co so all one word and then the website is unstuckco.com and lots of free resources uh, some downloadable guides um, subscribing will get you into the email list which will get you the links to all of these free resources i love chatting with people i i do love uh, social media in many ways um, I am trying to honor healthy boundaries around social media, but I do love, I've met the coolest people on social media and have some of, some of my um, professional relationships have started on social media, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Mm. What are some offers and programs you have for anybody who's listening and is eager to work with you? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so downloadable guides that really start at the basics, like, you know, branding 101, marketing 101, because the entrepreneurs, I primarily work with female entrepreneurs that are stuck and that need sort of the, the no BS practical, tactical guide. So there's, there, there are those. I've also got some downloads around uh, the meditations that have really changed my life that have helped me to build as an entrepreneur and a, and a female emotional and mental resilience and so Mm -hmm. I've shared those and then I'm just in the process right now of creating uh, my first e-course and that'll be coming out soon so the email list will will get access to that first which will be fun and yeah 
yeah it's been good amazing amazing i'll link everything so that people can find you on the blog post thank, thank you. you so much kate thank you for having me thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast what was your takeaway from today's conversation let me know in the comments or review i would love to hear from you Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.